Welcome to Pure Dog Talks Live at Five. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I'm really excited to have everybody here today. I think this is going to be a really super, super conversation, maybe a hard one. I promise to do better than the last time I discussed this and bawled through my entire after dark. So we're going <laughs> to make that a goal, try and get through this without losing it. But basically tonight we're going to um, have a conversation that's following the really tragic um, passing of handler and poodle breeder Kazo Saka. Uh, right after his win at Westminster Kennel Club, you get 38 days, just breaks my heart. Um, there have been a whole lot of be like cause commentary. And so I thought tonight, maybe we would talk a little bit about what does that actually mean to us? Um, Cause was not someone in my personal group of friends. I, I knew who he was. I watched him. I admired him for a lot of years. Um, but he was universally admired by people who aren't always admirers of everyone, I guess, to say it kindly. And, and I loved love and continue to love the the outpouring of support when he won and and the eulogies when he passed away and i saw a lot of different people making a lot of different comments on this and uh jeff hanlon had some really great commentary and his quote really stuck with me he said that being in the presence of cause is like taking a master class in perseverance, patience, kindness, humor, devotion, intuition, trust, sportsmanship, respect, friendship, and humility. So, I mean, it's kind of the Boy Scouts, right? Like you kind of feel that vibe a little bit. And, and I think that's not a bad thing, y'all. Um, so I thought we'd talk a little bit about how do we how do we model these virtues? How do we live our lives such that um, CBS today posts about a dog, you know, on national television, the dog person that passed away, like they did with Cuz? Um, how do we how do we use these virtues that Cuz embodied to sort of turn back that mean girl spirit, right? The mean people spirit. The how do we how do we walk away from that because we are deeply found foundational in these virtues? Um, and how do we how do we bring this into this epidemic of the grims that we've sort of talked about privately, all of us, I guarantee it. Um, it's just swept through the dog community. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that are just ready to hang it up. They're frustrated. They're disappointed. They're cynical, whatever it is. So how do we, how do we bring these virtues into battling that? So while everybody's hopping on a couple items for the good of the order, before we get started, we have a brand new swag story, y'all super cool merch. Check it out. If you're one of our patrons, there's a discount. You're going to find it at the shop tab on our website, puredogtalk.com. Don't forget, we have the new access availability for the archives, which is at 640 episodes. You guys can't get them all on Spotify, I promise. <laughs> Most of the original early content is only available in the archives. And so I personally have gone and hunted and pecked and pulled together what we're calling albums for you guys to, to be able to buy for a buck 99 to pay for my time. So you don't have to search for it. Right. Um, and there's, there's great topics that, that bring all of the podcast episodes on breeding and whelping or veterinary voice, or if you're an owner handler or breed specific ones, all of that is, is now all together in these albums. So check that out. As always, our success is your success and your success is our success. 
So if you haven't, do check out our exclusive patrons opportunities. You can sign up at the website, again, puredogtalk.com. This one is backslash patron. And you can sign up for a very um, pretty nominal fee, honestly, like a cup of coffee costs you more than this. And for 10, 20, maybe you're really into it, $30 a month, whatever you can afford, gets you access to more information, more knowledge, and more mentoring. And that's um, what this is all about. Uh, Pure Dog Talk originally was created as a solution to the oft-stated problem that we don't have enough mentors, it's hard to find them, etc. So that's what the patrons group brings you extra of. Um, so bottom line, your passion is our purpose. And so let's, let's get started here tonight and talk about some of the things that I think really stood out to me. I watched cause when he won, um, the Westminster the last time and this time. So I was there for both of those. I remember at the time that he won with uh, Spice Girl, I was so mad because I was really rooting for the Carrie because that was when Bill McFadden was showing the Carrie Blue Terrier Mick. And I really, I had competed against Mick. I loved Mick. I really wanted Mick to win. And Mick was kind of a, <clears throat> he, he, he was a little on fire that night. <laughs> I'll just say that. And, and so I was, I can't say I wasn't happy for cause, but I was mad because I wanted the carry to win. I'm like, no. So that, that's what stood out to me when I first saw cause up close at the garden. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's, you look at it over the years and you think about someone who was mentored by one of the greats in our sport by Ann Rogers Clark. Um, she and her husband, uh, first encountered him in Japan. There was a wonderful, wonderful um, eulogy to cause from Purina Pro Plan, actually, that we posted on the Facebook page. If you haven't read it, you should take take a look at that. Because his his history was really amazing. And um, I had watched him win this year. I'd watched his cousin win at Crufts. And I had in my mind this idea of interviewing the both of them. And I had put this together as an idea. I didn't, I didn't, get it done. And um, so I have some regrets about that. I'm, I'm not all, as I told my patrons, I'm not always grateful, right, for my competition. Um, but I was really grateful that Will Alexander got the got the interview with cause because that was huge. And so when we think about some of the things that people describe cause, um, I just kind of want to break that down. And let's talk about um, perseverance, just for starters. And in this in the sport of purebred dogs it has been true since i started in in the late 70s early 80s that the the five-year rule was a thing right people would get their purebred dog and they would go to a dog show and maybe they would breed a litter um and a lot of them were pieced out by five years and so perseverance is a real thing someone who is dedicated and puts their blood, sweat, and tears, their life's work into their breed is what cause represents. He was famous in miniature poodles. He showed a number of varieties. Um, I remember him very successful with a toy poodle whose name has gone right out of my mind. Little white dog was so cute. Um, <laughs> And, and, you know, but poodles were his life's blood. And I think when we talk about perseverance, you're talking about someone who is so iconically associated with a single breed and that, that perseverance didn't come in five minutes. It didn't come with one dog show. It didn't come with their very first dog. Um, it came after years and years and years and years and years of effort and perseverance. And I think perseverance in today's society is a little bit of an old fashioned notion. Um, there are an awful lot of people who think that they should be very successful immediately. 
and their very first dog should win instantly. And I, honestly, that's not really how dog shows work. And so I think that it is absolutely imperative. It's my favorite thing to take away from cause and what he stood for is perseverance and stick to right? My grandma would say, um, and, and understanding that you're not going to win the first day and maybe you win the first day and you don't win again for six months, right? I mean, it's just perseverance is a thing and, um, purebred dogs and the sport of purebred dogs are not, um, really designed for instant gratification. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a thing. Um, so the next one that I thought was really important, and again, a little bit old fashioned, is patience. And I have um, a very dear friend of mine uh, who who likes to tease me, and he says that I'm a little too Pollyanna-ish. And I am. I mean, let's be real. I am. Um, but I don't mind that. I think that's an okay thing to be. And uh, if you talk to the people who were around cause the most, a lot of those virtues that he lived are very old fashioned and very, in, in the words of some of my friends, Pollyannish. And that's okay because patience is what it takes to get good at something. There are people who apprentice with professional handlers who spend hours and hours and hours and hours. We're, we're talking about the Olympics this year, right? We have the summer games. You have those um, gymnasts or the, the track and field athletes. And you look at those kids because they're kids, they're young. And they are as young people, eight, nine, 10, 12 year old people. They're dedicating six hours a day to their sport. And that's how they're getting to go to the Olympics because they are spending and dedicating and having the perseverance and having the patience to learn their craft, to learn their sport. And I would strongly encourage everyone out there listening, everybody out there in dog show land, everybody out there in Facebook land and pure dog talk land to understand it's going to take a minute and there's a lot of three second wonders that don't last. And if your goal is to make a mark in your breed, to be successful, to, um, you know, have, have a goal of winning at accelerated levels, patience is what it takes. And the next item on the list, if you will, right, is kindness. Um, again, I think that the dog show world can get a bad rap because it's not what I experience on a daily basis or what my friends experience or how I grew up in it. There are people in this sport who aren't kind. I just avoid them. <laughs> and so I think cause was someone who the, the number of stories that I saw about him going up and greeting people that he, they didn't know him particularly, but he greeted them and encouraged them in the poodle ring at the dog show, what have you. That's something everybody can do. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be a Westminster Kennel Club best in show winner to just go up to whoever you see in your ring and say, Hey, great job. Or if they didn't do a good job, Hey, cute outfit, right? Like it doesn't take, it doesn't take rocket science. You guys to be nice. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't take anything away from you. And it does so much for the other person and for the sport. And I was just having this conversation actually earlier today with one of my like mentees. Um, there is in this idea of being nice, there is something of an epidemic of saying, oh, that's a beautiful dog or, oh, that's a cute puppy or, oh, that's great. And I don't know that that's necessarily the answer. I 
think that we can be honest, and this is something I'm really strong about, we can be honest and kind. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. And, and I think that's where a lot of us that are dog show people fall down is we want to be honest and we struggle with the kind part. <laughs> okay. And so as a, um, an object lesson, right? Be like cause when you see a friend of yours post on social media, their litter of puppies and they're not beautiful you don't have to say, oh, they're so beautiful. You can say, oh, great job. You're doing a great job raising them or, you know, they're chubby or, you know, something along those lines where you can be kind and encouraging without having to be dishonest. And so I think that that is a line that a lot of us need to find a better toehold on. Um, I see... <laughs> Social media, I've said before, I will say again, will be the death of all of us. You would never say to someone's face 98% of what people say in a Facebook group. So keep that in mind. Um, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Is always um, a kindness, if we're going to continue on this kindness theme. Um, Thumper had it right. Uh, I think that there are ways if someone asks you for advice to give critiques that are meaningful and useful and honest and still kind. Um, anybody who's listened to the podcast for some time can go back in their mind and think about the podcast interview I had with um, Jenny Line, one of my dearest and most favorite judges of all time who just recently retired. And uh, her description of, of, how she talks to the exhibitors and how she critiques the dogs that are not necessarily to standard in her opinion. And it's beautiful. And I think that if you want to know more about that, you can look up that podcast. You can keyword search it on the, on the face, on the, uh, sorry, on the website. Okay. Humor. I think, <laughs> I think humor is one of the things most lacking in um, situations where we're trying to be kind. I think people confuse humor and teasing and that sort of thing. And that can go wrong pretty fast. And I, I think that having humor is so important, but my suggestion is that we laugh at ourselves. Laughing at someone else can be taken the wrong way and, and you don't want someone laughing at you. So laugh at yourself. I laughed at myself a lot. Um, towards the end of the years when I was a little crunchier and I couldn't kneel down and then get back up again. And I had to park myself next to a, a ring standards. <laughs> To stand up again off the floor, you know, I mean, things like that. Um, laugh at yourself, have a sense of humor about your own failings. And, you know, again, one of the, one of the things that I saw so much of when people were talking about cause is the idea of humility. And um, it's, it's a beautiful um, virtue. I think humility is and having, having the balance between showcasing your dogs, letting your dogs speak for themselves and proper advertisement and promotion of your dog. That's one thing, but humility is a different thing altogether and, and not um, assuming that you deserve something, but working to earn it is, another one of those old fashioned notions, sorry. Um, but something that cause really uh, embodied. And I think that that is something for us to consider. And again, I, this is someone who is universally without exception admired. And 
I think that there's something to be said for that. Um, sportsmanship. Oh boy. Oh boy. So if you guys have been around the podcast for a minute, you've seen my, um, 12 steps to a happier you in the dog sport. I usually post it every new year's. Um, and the very first thing on the list is that we say congratulations to the winner and we say thank you to the people who congratulate us. And if ever, 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 um, we could all do that and mean it. You don't have to like the dog that beat you, but you do have to respect that the person with that dog loves that dog and you being terrible to it about it to them is, is never going to be the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Pam, I feel you. So, um, Natalie, if anybody wants to join us, I will throw this out here. We're at that point in the show. Um, anybody who wants to join us live and on air to share memories of cause to, um, share their thoughts about how he affected them and how they're taking that forward. Um, Natalie's going to drop a link and bring you on live to join me here. If you would like to do that, Pam, I see you out there. Um, Pam Bruce Kaz and I laughed often about our minds still being strong and our bodies were letting us down. Oh, honey. <laughs> um, Oh, Pam, that's beautiful. So, um, for those of you out there in listener land, um, we have a comment here. Um, uh, Pam Bruce judged at Westminster Kennel Club this year. She awarded best in variety to Kaz's miniature poodle, um, that he took to on to best in show. And, um, Hmm. I, I love that, Pam. I want to, I wish I could ever have seen cause show in Airedale. That would have been, that would have been heaven. I would have absolutely loved that. That, that is amazing. Um, okay. So anybody you're, you're join the, join the show here live with me. You are welcome. Click the link. Um, Natalie will bring you on air with me. I would love to hear from people and how they are practicing their be like cause. Um, because I think this is absolutely um, a community wide thing. And I'm really excited to hear from folks about, um, about how you too can be like cause. Um, okay. <clears throat> Back to what we're working on. Oh yes. Sportsmanship. I, I really, I will say now that I am judging, um, I, I'm pretty impressed most of the time with my exhibitors, frankly, truly. Um, but there are times and, and I can assure you whether you are a professional handler or an owner handler, that making that big stink eye face and, and, and dropping your mouth open and staring at me like I've lost my mind, is probably not going to be successful. And it is, um, not good sportsmanship. So every time I ever saw Kazo Saka, he had a smile on his face. Now I didn't spend that much time with him. I'm sure there was some time he was mad about something, but I have never heard about it. So, <laughs> um, I just, I just think that, uh, I have said for years that dog shows are important to us. They're important to our breeding programs. They're competitive, but we're not curing world peace, man. Um, this is not worth the histrionics that people sometimes put into it. It's just not. And so if you're a competitive person, I get that. 
keep your temper tantrums to the truck. I, this is an area that I struggled. I was just as competitive, compassionate, and wound up as everybody else. So I'm speaking from experience here. I'm holding myself to the same level. And um, it, it, you smile and you nod and you say congratulations and you go back to your truck. And if you need to stamp your feet for a minute, you do it there. You don't do it ringside. You don't do it to the other person. You don't do it to the judge. Um, that's just a thing. And it's a pretty big thing. It's clap for all the veterans. I clap for one dog, clap for all the dogs. You know, all those kinds of things, those are real. Those are really serious um, parts of the dog sport that I would love to see continue into the future. I had someone just um, this week, um, I had judged her dog as a, a fill-in for another judge who had been ill. Um, and her dog had been there to make points. It was a 12 year old champion that was there in a very rare breed to make points for other dogs. And she <laughs> messaged me to thank me for clapping for her dog, this 12 year old dog going around the ring, um, because, uh, it passed away like two weeks later. I just, you guys, seriously think about the people around you think about the dogs around you and think about ways to make it better um think about ways to make it so that you've made someone's day better not worse and you know best laid plans everybody tries there was there's a recent social media post someone had had um, you know, a great, you know, experience with the judge and a great experience with the ring and a great experience and great experience with the people. And they were very depressed because they didn't win. And I'm like, well, maybe we need to work a little bit on that, you know, goal setting. Um, so folks that are new folks that are coming into the sport, um, I encourage you to go look at that list of things. And these are things, the reason that we are so passionate about junior showmanship and supporting juniors on this show is because kids that grow up in this sport learn things that set them up for life, important parts of life that don't have anything to do with dogs. And it is winning and losing with grace. And it is sportsmanship and kindness and respect and earning respect, not having it handed to you. Um, these are things that kids that grow up in junior showmanship have and learn or should do anyway. Um, oh man. Okay. So Margarita um, just dropped a comment and I want to, I want to take a minute to respond to it because this is heartbreaking to me. Um, Margarita said that she avoided going to a show this past weekend because there's an individual that was there. That's always very sour and will not let me ignore them. A very in my face antagonistic person. So I stayed home to avoid a bad situation. Okay. So man, that just, that just breaks my heart. Um, I guess my advice such as it is, I mean, I know this isn't dear Laura or anything like that. Um, and, and everybody has to do um, what's best for them, what's healthiest for them. So I make no judgment, Margarita, but as, as a, as a word of support or encouragement, there's ugly people out there in the entire world in jobs, in, um, families walking down the street. There's ugly people everywhere. And, um, if this is someone who's making it an effort to be, um, in your face, 
I think that it is um, a healthy option to, to go do your thing and attempt to leave that person um, with enough space that they don't have to be up in your face. And if they choose to um, cross that line, to stand quietly and say, I, I'm not interested in having this conversation. I would appreciate it if you would go somewhere else. And I mean, it feels like a hard thing to say, but I can promise you as someone who's said those sorts of things before, um, it's kind of freeing. It's kind of um, gives you confidence in yourself and it gives you the ability to stand up and say, yeah, I, I can do this. And it's, I don't let people live rent free in my head. And if, if that's what that person wants to do, I'm either going to pretend they don't exist and there's a giant gaping hole in the air um, and go on about my life, or I'm going to say very specifically to them that I don't appreciate their involvement in my space. Um, and I know these are hard things. I'm not, I'm not suggesting to people any of this is easy. Um, but I also, there's a song out there, old one, nobody promised us a rose garden. It's real in dog shows too. <laughs> so, um, I'm sorry that you had that experience and I hope that you can be encouraged to surround yourself with really great people that are going to uplift you and, and not leave you with that um, feeling of having to stay home to avoid a terrible situation. That's, that's heartbreaking to me. Okay. Um, back to what we were talking about. Be like cause. Um, honestly, Cause would never make someone feel so bad they had to stay home. Um, and I think that he would also, and I'm guessing here, anybody wants to uh, jump in with me on this one, you're welcome to. Um, I believe that he would probably find that he had other things to do than worry about someone who wanted to give him a hard time. That's what I think. Um, and that's, I mean, that goes to the friendship piece. That, that's in this conversation that we're having. And I, I tell folks this all the time. Um, and, and I had someone else say it uh, in a different way to me the other day, but I think it's so true. The conversation is different when you associate yourself with successful people. The conversation changes. There's, I remember when I was a kid, my dad was not a, a great human. And, and so we don't really need to do a lot with that, but there's things that he said to me that stayed with me. And this is one of them. And it is that people, um, great minds talk about ideas, average minds talk about things and poor minds talk about people. There's various versions of that that have gone around for years. But I find it to be incredibly true in our sport. To all of you out there, um, the conversation is entirely different when you make a point of associating yourself with successful people, with positive people, with happy people. And so for Margarita, for other people like Margarita that are uh, struggling, um, seek out positive people, seek them out, go find them, whether it's a handler, whether it's an owner handler, whether it's someone in an entirely different breed and say, I really admire how you handle your dog or how you groom your dog. Would it be okay if I just watched you groom? I want to learn, or is there something I could do to help you? Can I hold a dog? Can I watch a dog on a table for you? And as you become friendly with these people who are successful, and as you are incorporated into their group, which you will be, again, it takes time. 
this is back to that perseverance thing, guys. Um, you find that the conversation is entirely different. And it, it, the conversation changes from, oh, that stupid judge doesn't know nothing and only puts up professional handlers and blah, 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 to really, truly understanding what a quality dog looks like, whether you have one or not, and how to acquire one if you don't. Um, and if you do, how to present it in such a way that the judge can see it. Because let's be real, guys. We can only judge what we see. And I said that a lot when I was still a handler and I did handling classes and all the kind of stuff. I'm going to tell you as a judge and Pam and all y'all that are here <laughs> can jump in on this one. I'm telling you the facts. Um, I can imagine some things, but I cannot create out of whole cloth a dog that is not presented well you may think it's the most beautiful thing in the world, but if I can't see it, it doesn't do you any good. So learning good presentation, learning good grooming, um, all of those things, uh, that's what you get when you hang out with a group of people that is successful. They help you learn those things. And the conversation really truly is different at that level. So, that, that friendship piece, that's one I really strongly encourage. You know, I think there's another one in here um, in this conversation that is kind of, I mean, I want to get to the Grimm's in a minute, but there's one I wanted to touch on that is um, harder to identify. And it's the concept of intuition. And, and again, I wish I'd had the opportunity to spend time with Kaz and know him. But the great dog people that I know just absolutely can feel um, the great dogs. And they can feel the communication with them. And this goes for owner handlers as well as professional handlers. This isn't to do with class of handler. So it's dog people. Um, they have an intuition about what breeding is going to work. My mother was incredible at that. Um, what's going to make a nick, right? We talk about a nick that's going to go well together and kind of lock in like a logo piece or Lego piece. Intuition is a piece of purebred dogs that I think is too frequently sort of ignored. We talk about the art and the science of dog breeding and the practice and the precision of handling and all of those things are real. But the sort of mystical piece, the sort of intuition piece, um, in my mind, is what separates the men from the boys, if you will, in terms of being really, really successful. And the best dog people I know are intuitively in tune with their dogs, um, with the situation. They have spectacular awareness of the, of the ring around them, um, all of those things. And they just have the intuition, the gut instinct about um, taking a taking a risk on a breeding or not, you know, all those kind of things. So I think intuition is kind of an interesting piece on this. Finally, I'm going to wrap it up. I know we're kind of reaching towards the end of this hour and I don't want to lose everybody, but um, there is a thing that's been on my mind recently. And, and I know normally I bring guests on here. I so rarely do these um, monologues. Um, but this just felt really personal and really important to speak to you guys about. So, and it is the, the idea of the grims, the, the sadness, the frustration, the, uh, I'm over it. Right. And it's sort of out there in the world, the world is having a moment of this. And as I frequently remind everyone, we are a, nothing more than a microcosm of 
the entire world. Dog sports are no different. And so as the world globally out there in the universe is having a hard time, so are we. And I think um, when we have such a, such a powerful and painful loss like cause, like um, Jimmy Mitchell, like some of the other huge longtime people we've had in this sport, um, it just adds to this overall sense of malaise, of um, the grims, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. And I, I talk to people all the time. I, I, I fight it. <laughs> like, don't think I'm anything special. I fight it. You know, like, oh, you mean I'm going to a dog? Why would I go to a dog show? Right? Yeah. No. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. And so I just really want you all to be, if I can leave you with one thing tonight, it is that each and every single individual one of us, from Pam Bruce, I see you out there, to Margarita, to Natalie, to whoever else is here, every single one of us is has the potential to positively impact the world, to build the next cause, Hosaka. And when we focus on doing that, the grims fade. So that's what I have for you. Um, Jason Hoke posted a really good thing that basically was this idea. Let's each and every one of us try to find and mentor and create and build the next Kazozaka. Good night, you guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Don't forget, be like Kaz.